when you say open, that doesn't mean the wild, wild west, yeah. right? Open doesn't mean that. Open means I'm building, I'm building smaller services, I'm building capabilities that, that can morph and change, but I'm not giving up security for that. Hey guys, this is Insurance Insiders and Insights at IBM. Today we have a very special guest. It's the Albert Global Insurance General Manager at IBM. Thank you very much for joining us here today. Hey Robin. Hey everybody. Happy to be here. And we prepared something very special for B today because we have a generator up there that provides us with tactics for insurers um, in the world today and in the state of the industry. And my question to B will be in a scale from one to 10, is it a tactic that she thinks is going to work? Um, B, are you ready for this uh, ride? I'm ready, Robin. All right. So uh, I have here a button. Let me push the button. Learning from history. Well, I didn't expect that one. B, what do you think? Is that a tactic for insurers? I think it is a tactic for insurers, Robin. I think it's probably maybe a seven. When you think of history with insurance, where does success in insurance come from? And it's when the insurer knows what's happening in society. What are the important things happening in society? Has the data to understand those occurrences and then can intercept those happenings and grow from it, right? He can grow his business from that. I think a great story there is if you look at in the fifties and sixties, what was happening, right? Families were growing, people were buying homes, people were buying the second car. And it was those insurers that knew that trend was coming in and it was going to sustain itself for a while. They built their companies around that to intersect and they grew. So history says, for insurance, for what they do, they sell a promise, they sell security. Look for those societal trends where people need to, to be secure and ensure what's happening to them. And that's where you'll find some of the growth trends. So yes, history is important. All right, let's go for the next one. We have a few more left. Platform economics. In a scale from one to 10, is that a strategy and a topic an insurer should go to? I think they should. It's early in the process, right? The adoption of platform economics. And it's really, platform economics is really around expanding your business model. What as an insurer should I do besides selling policies? You could look at selling services to those policyholders. That's part of their need. Like I said earlier, societal changes, right? So for an example, if I have a policyholder that, you know, an elderly policyholder, right? She no longer, that person no longer maybe needs an auto policy, but now they do need services to be able to stay in their home. Yeah. And on a, on a platform, I could provide a subscription to those services, whether it's for something like grocery delivery or even monitoring capabilities in their home, et cetera. Oh, insurers are doing that today, right? Like I said earlier, it's early in the process, but they're doing that and they're building those platforms. And more importantly, they're building those network relationships, those business network relationships that you know will be a part of the technology to enable that and, and are there already first movers in the market uh, in around the world uh, where you say oh well they're actually really doing this platform economics thing i think um some early adapters in japan post did that they have a they had a unique population over there again the aging population that needed support that needed care that needed the ability to stay in their home and so they, they you know, worked through that and figured out how they could deliver more services, right? In addition to the insurance that they are providing and they had some unique characteristics on there and how they accessed those insured, but that's how they're building, you know, they built that business model. There was great, you know, kind of an early experiment and the results that they had of creating more loyalty, right? Around their policy and their policy holders and their ability to serve that population. All right, let's go to the next topic. The next topic is lifestyle concierge. From a scale from one to 10, is that a strategy or a tactic that insurers should apply or not? I would put this in the category, I would put that in a seven or okay. eight right now. And partially because of 
the uh, capabilities of where everyone is and understanding what that is. But it is, but I put it higher on the scale than a five because it is a pathway to growth. What is a lifestyle concierge or a life concierge uh, in your definition? What do you understand as it and what kind of role should and could and should play there? So lifestyle concierge said, I am looking at the entire risk profile of a person, not just, or of a business, right? Even it applies from a business perspective as well. Not just this person is acquiring this product and they need to insure it now. Lifestyle concierge says that that person has a risk profile that they're going to have different tolerances for, right? Depending on, on what, what it is that needs to be insured. And I am able to collect the data on that. I'm able to assess the risk pools that are represented there and how I can then offer a product to the person, right? I can offer capabilities and almost think of it as services to that person that change over time. All right, we have one more to go. Let me hit the button. Voice. Do you think that's something uh, insurers should uh, do or not as a tactic uh, in a scale from one to 10? How do you think people like to communicate? Easily, frictionless. Right, right. So voice, when, and when it comes to being able to interpret natural language in, like you say, an easy way, a frictionless way, but interpret it, you know, and capture it digitally, so then that voice can be utilized is absolutely something you know that's important. IBM's invested millions of dollars in natural language processing over many, many years, right? We've, we've been in this business for a long time to, to understand what can natural language do for business. And, and it's much more than just you know, being able to res, you know, respond. It's taking that information that someone, like say, is frictionless, frictionless and bringing it into a, a digital world. My big question now is, um, can you share a few use cases from around the world of carriers that you know, already undertook their first steps in these directions? Do you have maybe your top three examples? Sure. So I would start, I would start with US-based example here with MetLife. And, and it certainly relates to the theme around how do insurers grow, you know, yeah. strategies. And they were, um, MetLife was looking to get into small business insurance and around group benefits for that. And they knew they needed a different platform, a fl more flexible platform, just because, because of the characteristics of what small business is like. And so working with IBM, right, we developed a few, a few things. One is the, a flexible platform, right? Cloud-based, flexible capabilities to rapidly respond to the needs of small business around group, group benefits, number one. Number two, this notion of a, a user experience and user interaction that's pleasant, right? That, that engages you, is easy to use, is pleasant, and, and so worked with them to build that and, and for that to be effective. And then the third element of it was, is, is that platform had to be open Yep. to be able to also interact with other areas such as data and analytics, risk information, security information, you know, kind of that. So that openness of the platform all coming together to provide a service out to these small businesses. Okay. Do you have another use case you, you were, you were thinking about uh, which, um, you know, a carrier from around the world who um, actually, you know, try to apply these tactics. We had now the platform. Uh, do you have maybe somebody from some other area? So we'll go to, uh, let's, let's talk about Ergo. For yeah, we're from Germany, my friends from this world. Shout out uh, to the- I knew there. <laughs> you would love that example, Rob. <laughs> so, so um, and, and they were in front of this, right? Of, of the idea of creating a platform to deliver new services in a more cost-effective way. And so, so the Ergo story was they had a pretty expensive system supporting closed book life. Yep. And, and so they, they needed to reduce their costs. They needed, again, kind of go back to the same thing. They did have to provide more flexibility because they were going to have to support this closed book life you know, for another 50 years or so. Yep. And, and so we worked with them, one, to bring in a new system that was lower cost, had the flexibility they needed, and provide the longevity that they needed to support those those policies for that extended period of time and build in new capabilities 
that they can continue to analyze those policies and, and reduce their costs and provide service. So again, go back to the notion of how do I become, how do I become more open? How do I reduce my costs? How do I provide customer service that I could never do in a previous way? And, you know, kind of delight those, delight those policyholders out there that are still there. Cool. And do you have another example, maybe? So Groupama is another example. I mentioned them a little bit earlier here briefly, yep. but what Groupama wanted to do is, is change their insurance model. They wanted to look at some of the early insure tech capabilities around usage-based insurance. They needed to bring the data in to change that insurance model. So utilizing sensors, utilizing IBM's IoT capabilities, utilizing our analytics and AI capabilities to kind of, and, and also go back to ensure more of the lifestyle versus just the object, right? So, so to provide better insights on where the, it's, it was for auto, where is the auto? What are the risks associated with the location? Certainly what are risks associated with the driving habits? Yeah. What are risks associated? They brought in weather data, geospatial data, and delivered outcomes to be able to reduce the cost, right, from five to 10% for each insured that was there. And so, and so it had a direct reduction in cost, direct reduction in collisions. So they, you know, they reduced the collisions and, and reduction in the claims because of kind of the early warning and detection capabilities that are there. So that, you know, again, new ways of bringing together insights and information, change your business model and grow your revenue. B, it has been a pleasure. Thank you, Robin. It has been a pleasure for me. I've enjoyed talking with you and look forward to the next time. Cool.